Coming up, a portable gaming device, a universal phone remote, I think, uh, iPhone 5S, and even more. All that and more today on Before You Buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Before You Buy is brought to you by Stamps.com. Start using your time more effectively with Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage, the instant you need it, right from your desk. To get this special offer, go to Stamps.com now. Click on the microphone and enter Before You Buy. That's Stamps.com. Enter Before You Buy. Can you see it? <laughs> and welcome to Twit's product review show, Before You Buy. My name is Shannon Morse, and I am the producer of today's show. I'm also the host, filling in for Mr. Leo Laporte. Today I am joined by Mr. Justin Robert Young. We'll go back to him in just a few moments, and Mr. Father Robert Balliser. Hello, Father. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm good. I know it's, it's a beautiful day, and it, uh, yeah, I got to watch the race of the America's Cup. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Did we lose? No. No, it's all tied up. <laughs> really? I know, crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. in your face, USA, nice. USA, USA, USA. <laughs> oh, all right, obnoxious. well, if you've never watched Before You Buy before, this is Twitch product review show. We get everybody in here to review all sorts of tech gadgets and devices and even some accessories and peripherals. And today, the first one off is Mr. Father Robert. Yeah. What do you have for us? This little honey is the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 7.0 LTE okay. edition on AT&T. 7.0. Yeah, all right. Put yeah. all those together. It's, it also comes in 8.0 it, and it 10? Has, there's an 8-inch version and there's a 10.1-inch version. So okay. this is the smallest of the, of the three. Uh, it's the newest version of their tab. And, um, well, you know, it's a nice little Android device that also happens to have a really, really kick-ass fast LTE connection. Wonderful. Well, why don't we jump right into your review? The Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 7.0 AT&T LTE edition is a lightweight 7-inch Android 4.2.2 device that links a lightweight tablet to AT&T's 4G LTE wireless service. Measuring 7.4 inches by 4.37 inches by 0.4 inches and weighing just 11 ounces, the Galaxy Tab uses Qualcomm's MSM8930AB 1.6 GHz dual-core processor and sports 1.5 GB of RAM. 16 gigabytes of internal memory, and an expansion slot that can support 64 gigabyte micro SD cards. The 7-inch TFT screen is big and bright, though Galaxy series aficionados may find it somewhat lacking. The screen has a resolution of 1024 by 600 with a pixel density of 170 ppi. That's not bad, but it doesn't compare favorably to devices like Samsung's own Galaxy S4 with a 5-inch Super AMOLED screen running 1920 by 1080 resolution and a pixel density of 441 ppi. In addition to HSPA Plus with enhanced backhaul on the AT&T network, the Galaxy Tab supports dual-band 802.11 ABGN and Bluetooth 4.0. It also features Wi-Di and DLNA for connecting to TVs and media devices, as well as WatchOn, an application that combined with an IR port on the right side of the tablet can remote control your gear. Using the tablet is actually quite intuitive. There is no one-hand operation, but the Galaxy Tab fits comfortably into my hands and was the right shape to be cradled in my palm. Power and volume buttons were easily reached and the speaker provided a surprising amount of sound. The Galaxy Tab features two cameras, a front-facing 1.3 megapixel camera and a 3.0 megapixel sensor on the back. The cameras work well enough for video conferencing and the odd shot, but it's not a strong suit of the Galaxy Tab. What is the strong suit is power. With a fast processor and a decent amount of memory, the Galaxy Tab is quick. The interface is smooth and I didn't see much hesitation or lag while gaming or browsing. Power is provided by a non-user replaceable 4000 mAh battery that in our tests provided a full day of processor and screen intensive activity. It lasted for about 8 hours of Netflix, 7 straight hours of ingress, and multiple days when just used for email and light browsing. In all, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 is a well-designed, well-powered tablet that might be just a ticket for someone who wants more functionality than they can get from a phone, but more portability than from a 10-inch tablet. The Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 7.0 AT&T LTE Edition is available now. You can purchase it for $299 
or $200 with a two-year contract. Oh, so pretty. Yeah, it is pretty. I mean, this thing is fast. It's undeniably fast. And the battery life is phenomenal. This goes right. all day. Way longer than you think a device with such a big screen should go. Uh, I also like the fact that it does that uh, that wonderful multi-screen thing. And it, you've got enough real estate to do multi-screen. I hooked up a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard to this. And I actually had myself a nice little laptop replacement experience. Nice. Yeah. And not only that... The LTE connection on AT&T was actually really, really good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I make fun of AT&T sometimes, but they did it right on this device. It's fast, it's consistent, and uh, I was able to do everything from streaming to broadcasting off of this one device. Now, on the con side, the first thing has to be the screen. It's mm -hmm. it's just, it's below par. We're talking 20, 1024 by 600. That's Yeah, you that's can definitely see a difference wrong. between the two. Yeah, especially on, on such a nice device to put a screen like that, it just, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, it, it's relatively expensive. When you consider the fact that for just a few dollars more, I could get the Nexus 7 which, with a much nicer screen. <laughs> you know, the nicest, arguably the nicest screen in tabletdom with a, a decent <laughs> processor as well. This might be a bit on the pricey side. Now, this is a little bit on the, the long and the tooth side. So hopefully those prices will drop to make this a, a competitive device again. So, you know, considering that, I, I gave it a try. It, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a bad device. It's actually a really well-designed device. My only problem with it is that there are other devices out there right now that are just a tiny bit more expensive, but much more capable. Yes, I, yeah. I pretty much agree with you. I think this is a really good option for somebody who really needs high-end battery life, especially, since it lasts so long. It's very important for some people. Right. Right. Though, if, if your importance is in the screen, you might want to look elsewhere. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Good review. Thank you so much, Padre. And where can people find you? Uh, they can find me here every Monday on <laughs> Twiet, This Week in Enterprise Tech at noon Pacific time. Or they can find me on Know How yes. every Thursday at 3 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, you know, just come geek out with me. Yay, and we welcome you with open arms Yay. to Know How. Ooh. I also produce Know How. You can find that at twit.tv slash kh. Next up, we have Mr. Tom Merritt. He is going to give us a review of the Logitech Harmony Ultimate. He's our pretty much one of our home theater geeks here, so let's see what he thinks. So this is the Logitech Harmony Ultimate, list for $350. It's a universal remote. You probably find it for about $300 these days. And it's in the long line of Harmony remotes that promise to be easy to set up and then flawlessly control all of the things in your media center. I've had a Logitech Harmony 800 for years, and I've been ready to replace it because the buttons are starting to wear out. One of the cool things about the Logitech Harmony Ultimate is that it is RF, Bluetooth, and infrared. So we'll get to that in a second. I want to talk about the setup, though. Big deal with Harmonies is you go online, you tell the app what devices you have, and then you can create profiles for those devices, and you can create what are called activities. So if you press watch TV, the remote will automatically turn on the television and the satellite box or the cable box or the DVR, whatever else it needs to do that. If you want to say, I want to watch Roku, it'll switch to the Roku input, and it'll transfer your remote to be able to control the Roku box, whatever. The online system of setup has never been good from Harmony, and I would argue it may have gotten worse. It's a long install process because you have to do a plug-in from Logitech, and they use Silverlight, uh, which gave me no end of heck trying to get started on this thing. And it's just slow and buggy and confusing. And for some reason, HDMI 4, which was working fine on my old Logitech Harmony remote, was no longer an option, and I had to reprogram a new thing. So absolutely hate the setup app. The setup of the Logitech Harmony Ultimate is a little more complicated than the usual one because you have this, this little Logitech Harmony hub. So you have to plug this in, set it up with your Wi-Fi network. You will need a Wi-Fi network to make this work. And then you have to put infrared repeaters around to broadcast the infrared. Now, I was a little skeptical about this because I've tried one of these kinds of systems before and I didn't like it. However, it wasn't that bad to set up, and it actually worked. A lot of these infrared repeaters are a little sketchy. This one works really well. Also, you get a much better charger. The old one that I had was flat, and it would, it would always beep because it would get warped and it wouldn't work. This one sits right in there really nicely, so it's a much better charging system. But the best part about this Logitech Harmony remote is that you don't have to point it at the television. 
Because it used to be you'd have to hold that remote and wait for it to turn on the television, now turn on the VCR, now change the input, and you couldn't hold it down until the infrared was done sending all the commands. This one, because this is connected to the Wi-Fi, just sends the command over there, and then it takes care of everything else for you. You don't have to deal with it. You can actually use an app on your phone as long as you're connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your Harmony Ultimate hub. So that, in addition to a much better keyboard layout, and they've improved the keyboard layouts over the years, but these all make sense. These buttons have the, the common terms like OK and Guide and DVR. And then the buttons that are specific to your particular device will show up in this touchscreen. Also, what shows up in this touchscreen, my favorite thing ever, these short keys for different channels. So I can program in my favorite channels. Instead of having to know what channel sci-fi is on, I just scroll to the sci-fi icon and press it, and I can switch channels so much faster. Overall, Logitech Harmony Ultimate is an absolute buy. And I say that without reservation or changing my review, my review, my review that the setup is making me stutter. It's so bad. I'm hoping that Harmony will make that better. I'm hoping they'll get rid of Silverlight. I'm hoping they'll work on that user interface. But even with it, you can make it work. You can make it work correctly. And once you do, this is a dream for controlling all of your home theater setups. You, you don't even have to get up. The remote is across the room. You can just pick up your phone if it's next to you and use the remote. This, this is probably the best universal remote I've ever used. It's the Logitech Harmony Ultimate like I said, list for $350, available usually these days around $300. I say buy. Okay, so he gave a buy to the ultimate universal telephone. Well, I'm just kidding. It's the universal remote. But seriously, when Padre saw this, you, or, or was it you, Justin? It Somebody was me. Said, what are said, we reviewing, reviewing a phone, a phone today? Phone for? A home phone? That makes no sense. What is this, Roseanne? No, I'm going to take this home with me, and I'm going to test it out on my own home home theater because I have I have slowly been growing five, six, almost seven remotes now with my Roku and everything else uh, included. So I'm a little bit tired of having so many different. You know, you remotes. know, the funny thing is, I, I don't know where that device, and as awesome as Tom found it, fits in a world where now on devices like what I'm going to review with the iPhone 5S and what Padre reviewed. Yeah, where so many apps. exactly yeah, where that's now true. all these apps sort of fit on your phone, including the shortcuts and stuff that, that Tom liked, and that has zero setup and that's it already true, lives yeah. in your pocket and you don't have to lose it. So it, it's it's curious to see where we're going with that. Well, speaking of your phone, you just got the new 5S, right? I got the fives. The fives. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. I got fives, y'all. <laughs> so you um, got the iPhone 5s. I did. Which came out of the box with iOS 7, correct? It does. iOS 7 pre-installed. I got it uh, in line at the uh, New Haven, Connecticut Apple store. Yeah, how was uh, that? It was actually <laughs> real fun. It Good was, experience. It was, okay. yeah, not bad. It was not a bad line. So, all right, let's start it off with what I think is the uh, immediate feature that has kind of changed the way that I use the iPhone, which is Touch ID. In my setting up of the passcode or using the Touch ID, I have had very little failure, and I have yeah. no patience for passcodes in general. Well, I have, saw you using I've, it earlier today, and it automatically just let you in after yeah. you used your fingerprint. I've had, I've had an iPhone since the first one. Mm -hmm. I've never locked it, ever. Really? The Touch ID has made it so I now have a locked phone okay. painlessly. What I like about this technology is that the security came to me I did not go to the security. Interesting. For whatever, I mean, obviously this is going to be a technology that's talked about a lot. Yes. We've already seen reports because uh, there's been big, you know, big money bounties out there to see uh, somebody to crack it. It has, uh, I guess the the uh, CCC in Germany uh, had a video hack and, and has, mm -hmm. it would not shock me if that is confirmed. It, it still to me represents something that is demonstrably better yeah. than a passcode was or what I had before, which was literally no security. No security um, at all. <laughs> no security at all. For me, I look at Touch ID and I think I would much prefer to have some kind of passcode because that's what I've gotten so used to using. Yeah. And I'm, I use security on everything and encryption. So from your standpoint, though, not using encryption as much, you like it. Well, I mean, I will say this. It's easier. Uh, I was riding my bike. Code. 
uh, or a bike uh, from one from Quincy Market to a friend's house in Somerville, Massachusetts over the mm-hmm. last day. I would pull out my phone and unlock it while I was riding the bike, and it was easier for me to just tap the button once and then hold my finger on uh, the Touch ID sensor uh-huh. than it was for me to try and slide to unlock it right. while I was otherwise busy, and I'm now holding <laughs> this several hundred dollar phone. That way you don't fall off your bike. I don't fall off my bike, <laughs> and more importantly, I don't drop this. Cool. Um, so it is, to me, a huge difference in how I use the phone and now how my my life that I keep on here is secured in case somebody took it or wanted to monkey around with it while I wasn't around. That is a, a huge thing for me, yes. uh, just being better than I was before. Right. The other big element of the phone is that it is marginally faster. If you had a 5, you will notice uh, elements where it does pick up speed. I would mm-hmm. say specifically in processor-intensive uh, issues like Siri. Siri, to me, has always been something that, uh, to me, I, there are two kinds of people that, as they interact with Siri. People <laughs> that have car commutes and people that don't. <laughs> People that don't have car commutes, uh, I think, tend to not really find Siri all that useful. So true. <laughs> if you have a car commute, I think you oftentimes find yourself using mm-hmm. it, if even just to check uh, text messages as they come in, if not write te- text messages back. I found Siri to be a lot different uh, with the A7 processor nice. and whatever the, uh, and now that the 64 bit that the iPhone 5. S has uh, has working for it. And they increased it to 64 bit, I believe. 64 bit, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, very uh, nice. What about so the camera? The camera is a real, uh, you know, the the biggest difference I found is in uh, the lighting. It has uh, two flashes on the back, uh, mm-hmm. one warm and uh, one dark, and that way you can kind of judge a little bit better. Uh, exactly, or the phone judges a little bit better uh, what lighting it is. Oh, that's good. And how to pick uh, how to pick things up. But really, to me, the thing that I've used the most is the slow mo camera. Yeah. So let's go ahead and do a little uh, a little test here. Yay! We are going to uh, we are going to have uh, Padre make uh, just go ahead and and do me a favor, shake your face. Like back and forth. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. Don't spit at me, okay? Go. <laughs> oh, that hurt. <clears throat> Excellent. All right. So now we Good go job, in. Padre. Ouch. <laughs> to our slow motion video, and we'll see if we can get this right up here for the camera. We'll focus <laughs> it a little bit. This will not end well. Yes. Okay. All right, we're ready. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, no, that that's not an attractive look. <laughs> it, it looks like it catches enough F- FPS that it doesn't look choppy mm. and horrible. No. No, 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 no. So it's 120 uh frames per second. Okay. On the camera and that uh everything that is done right there it automatically sets a little bit of real time and then at the beginning and the end, but you can adjust that to have exactly the moment that you want slowed down afterward. <laughs> I'll tell you what. That's so funny. <laughs> I really think that there is an element of how fun those videos can be that as we see the publishability of them, right now you can really only put them on Facebook and yeah. YouTube and stuff like that, but as we see it, Twitter really leaps to mind, uh, the ability to publish these right from the iPhone, uh, they're really fun. You know, it, it, you kind of find yourself wanting to find things yeah. to record in slow motion. And considering how camera happy iPhone users are in general, this is another tool in that toolbox. Did you get the one for AT&T? I have AT&T. I've, I switched okay. to uh, AT&T for the iPhone. I have not that left was them $199? yet. On a full contract upgrade, it is one ninety nine. Okay. I'm currently in a situation where uh, I got a partial upgrade, which is something I didn't know existed. Mm-hmm. It was a uh, in the high fives. If you are to flip your old model, if you are going year by year on the iPhone, as I tend to find myself doing, uh, you can yeah, sell happens. it on a service <laughs> like Gazelle and wind up getting it for around what you would pay the $200 uh, upgrade price. Sounds so like I would a good deal. highly recommend you take a look at services that reselling services because for the five, 
they have continued to hold at over 300, at least uh, as of launch day for the right. iPhone, which is usually not the case because that usually nosedives after the announcement. Now, one last question for you. How do you feel about iOS 7 on the 5S? iOS 7 is at its best, obviously, on 5S, so mm -hmm. I can't speak to where it would be on a 4S or a 5. Uh, well, I played I've, with it on my 4, or my iPhone 5, excuse me, and I've noticed that it's very speedy. Uh, yeah. The processing is really quick with it. My iPad, though, I also upgraded that one, and my iPad, which is a third generation, I'm it's the the first retina that came out yeah uh that one is very slow okay it's really bad on the third generation ipad so i wasn't too happy with i that. have not upgraded to my ipad yet um i'll be curious to see where it is then in terms of the iphone 5s it's really fast cool. and if you like the ios 7 which i happen to like then you will enjoy all of Everything that kind of comes uh, comes with it, with it running as fast as it does. Have you played with Android phones at all? I heard I a few have. people say that it's similar to Android now. You know, I think specifically in terms of uh, in terms of some of the slide down menus, like a Notification Center when it first yes. came onto iOS, yeah. uh, was something that people uh, you know uh, linked to other uh, Android, similar Android stuff, and uh, the control center here, which you slide up from the bottom. Yeah, that's pretty similar. Certainly has, at least in the, like, the one touch, mm -hmm. turn this on, turn this off sort of stuff, uh, that is something that is uh, an element that when I was, I had a phone stolen, I had to wind up using Android yeah. a little bit. Uh, that is something that was there. For me, and it's not surprising, Apple is very rarely the one who to do things first. They're... Yeah the ones to try to do things the best. I mean, that is their aim. <laughs> One might say, and, and I would say that I've easily more, I've, I've had a better time getting to know this iOS than I did the Android iOS, specifically even with these menu uh, options. But I think that's a matter of opinion. Yeah. Uh, I very much, I'm an iOS guy. Uh, I gave Android a run, but it was on inferior hardware, so I, I don't want to make oh, any sweeping generalizations okay. about it. <laughs> But it's something that out of the box, iOS is the operating, the best operating system it can be. Whereas on Android, you can have any number of options with it. It's just a matter of getting your own, you know, getting your own uh, right. launcher and getting all these other elements that sort of make it the customized experience that you've come to enjoy. But then again, talking about iOS and Android is like, you know, talking about religion <laughs> or something. Completely different right? species. <laughs> what? Wait, religion? Huh? Wait. Well, I know that you're totally jet lagged. I know you just got back to California. So let me go ahead and get you to your pros and cons. Yes. And your verdict. Okay. Uh, the pros and cons. Uh, the Touch ID is a, is a game changer for me. I, I did not secure my phone. I now secure my phone. Uh, the speed, specifically in terms of Siri and specifically in terms of maps, is something that I really found to be, uh, you know, something where... When it comes down to it, you need that speed at crucial moments. Mm -hmm. You need that speed while you are in the car. You need that speed when you need that direction, when whether or not you're going to go left or right. This is something that I've found to be a big difference. Camera is awesome. iOS 7 is something that I've really enjoyed. The cons. I don't know if I would say to iOS 5 owners it's an absolute must upgrade was something that I was very happy to go from a 5 owner to a 5S owner. I enjoyed a lot of the upgrade stuff, but is it something that I need that I would, you know, run up to somebody and grab them by the collar and scream that they needed to upgrade because <laughs> they're missing out on stuff? No. However, here is where the great uh you know, the great ceiling is. Is with that 64 uh bit processor, mm -hmm. there's a ceiling on this phone that we have not yet hit. And as the iOS developer community uh, gets into what its capacities are, I think we could see some really, really, really awesome stuff on this phone specifically mm -hmm. that you won't be able to run with the kind of speed on a 5 or a 4S. Yeah, that's true. So, there we go. Uh, what is I'm your in verdict? a buy, don't buy, try, try. think about, daydream. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe, possibly, sort of, kind of. For me, it's a buy. Uh, Bye. Okay. You know, if you if you are going to uh, if you are an iOS fan 
you enjoy having the latest Apple hardware, it's a you will be pleased with what you get. And I do think that Touch ID is uh, a, a real a real game changer. Well, I'll be honest, I am not interested in using Touch ID myself. Sure. <laughs> just because I can't wait to see what all my security professional friends do to uh, hack it and figure out how, how to get around it, which I know has already sort of happened. Sure. But, but let me ask you this. But otherwise. It's like, but is, is, is the passcode a safer way to do things? You can change a passcode. Yes. You can't change your fingerprint. You can take off fingerprints. <laughs> like, no, no. So it, 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 it has, it has up to five as... of, of the fingerprints uh, that you can, you can have on there. Oh, okay. Um, and so you can delete the profiles. So you can say only my thumb really? works with it or only okay. my finger, only like my forefinger uh, cool. works with it. And then you can delete those mm -hmm. uh, at your whim. Okay. So it is not just so you like you only five. have you only have five <laughs> profiles that you can have, and that okay. means that you could have somebody else's on there. So that is an element of a security flaw, where if somebody yes. got into your phone, they could add their fingerprint, which gets into and it. However, come back you only um, you can do whatever you want, man. <laughs> uh, you can uh, you uh, can only use Touch ID so many times, right? And then at the uh, after that, it It'll forces you, you to enter into your passcode. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I'm glad that it still uses, it's kind of, well, it's not really two-factor authentication, but it still asks you for a separate passcode in case the first yes. one doesn't work. Absolutely. That's nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you, Justin. Excellent. Really appreciate you coming in. I know you're so tired. So no, me? I will keep you in front of the camera longer than I need to. All right. <laughs> thank you, everybody. You can go back to sleep now. Mm. <laughs> And I would like to thank our sponsor, who is Stamps. Stamps.com. They're amazing. I use them almost every day here at Before You Buy. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment. But first off, 2 billion. That's the number of letters and packages that have already been sent using Stamps.com. So why are you still going to the post office for your mailing and shipping needs when you can do everything right from your desk with Stamps.com? It's so easy to use. It's super, super convenient. You never have to leave your household to actually use it. You can actually have the post office come to you and pick up packages at your office or your home if you never get out of your PJs like me. You can buy and print official U.S. postage using your own computer and printer. Stamps.com is going to send you a digital scale. This thing is so cute, too. Automatically calculates exact postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail. Super easy to use. You're never going to waste time going to the post office. Again, that's my favorite part about it. And you won't waste money leasing one of those super expensive postage meters. I mean, nobody wants to even use one of those things. I hate them. My favorite thing about this is the fact that I do before you buy. So I have to send and receive packages all the time. Whenever I get a new product in, I'll send it out. I'll just package it up and leave it on the front desk for Frederic. And I'll say, hey, can you send this back to uh, the product company? You know, if I had a, Apple send us an iPhone 5S, I could say, hey, can you send this back? I need it insured. I need it certified. I need a return receipt or a, a signature on, on delivery. I can do everything that I need to with stamps.com. So she can just hang out at her, her front desk. She doesn't even have to walk over to the post office. She can print out the postage right there, and it looks nice and professional. We can even put Twit's logo on the label, which is super cool. And we can send it off on its own way, and everything is taken care of. So I love it. I use it at home for eBay sales and everything else that I personally do on my own time. So right now, you can use the promo code before you buy for this special offer. It's a no-risk trial, plus you get a $110 bonus offer. It includes a digital scale and up to $55 of free postage. So don't wait. So to do this, go over to stamps.com, and before you do anything else on there, see that little microphone up at the top of the homepage? So click on that. Yep, right there. And then you type in before you buy. And you get that awesome 110 special value offer. And you get Leo Laporte's awesome face right there. That's over at stamps.com. And you enter before you buy. And, of course, we thank stamps.com for promoting and sponsoring our wonderful episode of Before You Buy. Now it's my turn. Woot! Yay! 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 Snob's time. I have the NVIDIA Shield. Or NVIDIA Shield, depending on which person you talk to at which con convention because nobody really knows how to say it right. <laughs> it's the shield. <laughs> it is the shield. So this has been toted at 
you know, CES, at E3, all over the place for the entire year. So it came out um, maybe a couple months ago. And this thing costs $300. So it's a little bit pricey, but there's really good reasons for this. So I'll start with the screen and I'll work my way down. So they, basically they're toting this as not only a gaming peripheral device, like a gaming uh, mobile device that you can take on BART with you or take on a subway or whatever, but they're also toting it as a Android tablet as well because this five inch tablet has Jelly Bean already, you know, worked into yeah. it, already cooked. installed, worked. already cooked in. Yes, exactly. So let me start with the screen on this guy, and I'll set it down so we can get some close-ups of it. So this is a 5-inch screen. It's 1280 by 720 IPS. So it has great, really, really nice turning ratios on there. So I can turn it either way I want, and it, it looks beautiful. I can also tilt it back and forth as far as I want to. No problems. And it's also touch. So I can install all of my Google Play apps on here and get to them on the screen. But... To be completely honest, when I hold it with my hands on the controller, I don't really want to reach up with my two hands up here and press buttons on the touch screen. So what I normally do is I use this little mouse that shows up with the analog stick, hmm. and I can control it with that. And the other analog stick is works kind of as a selector, so I can move around and click on different things. So is, that, is that natural? Is that a natural movement on yeah. the on the mouse? Yeah. Like, did you find? Did you like using it? I did. Yeah. Actually, I, I really did. So um, it's kind of interesting. It's, this five-inch screen is just uh, slightly bigger than my iPhone five screen. So it's a pretty decent viewing uh, screen, and it is, because of the resolution, it's really nice to actually watch videos on or whatnot. If I click on YouTube up here, uh, the resolution is beautiful yeah, for sharp. an episode really of Before good, You uh, Buy. Yes, density. it is yeah. very, very sharp. Um, I was watching this and I could like see Leo's pores. It was kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it is awkward whenever you want to type in text. So if I wanted to search for Before You Buy on here, I had to come up here and type with teeny tiny fingers, you know, Before You Buy. And I uh, will pause that. Could you use the uh, the thumb pad, the uh, little joystick, to, to move around you the keyboard? You can. That's tedious. Yeah, you can, but it is yeah. very tedious. It's honestly a lot easier to just move your hands up and type in whatever you need. But for text specifically, it is still kind of a pain in the butt because you have to move from the controller up to the screen and back and forth. By the way, the sound on that actually was pretty good. Yeah, it's the kind of audio booming. Yeah. is my second thing. So the audio is really, really loud. So if I turn this up all the way, I'll go back to that video. And they have a physical audio button on here that I can click, and I can pull it all the way up. So the speakers are right here, these two guys right here. The nice thing is, if you're playing music on here, and you move this down, it gives you a little bit more of a directional sound, so it'll get even louder for you. And because the bottom of this is made with little rubber padding, it's not going to rumble. It's not going to vibrate into your table or anything yeah. like that. And you're not going to find it like vibrating and, you know, causing a bunch of distractions when it's moving around for you. It's nice and sturdy, so you can move it around and not have any problems with the audio. The audio was a big plus for me. I really like that. Now the hardware on this, um, other than having the rubberized bottom on it, it is 1.5 pounds, so it is a little bit more heavy than other, mm -hmm. you know, gaming devices out there. The uh, the 3DS, I believe, is less than one pound. The Vita is also very, very lightweight. So this one is pretty much the heaviest on the market at the moment. Um, that might be a con for you, depending on how much you're willing to carry in your backpack. Um, honestly, after putting in my laptop and everything else, it does add a little bit of weight, but it's not necessarily that obvious. And the ports on the back of this include, there we go, all right, so I have a micro USB, and that's specifically for charging. I also have a headphone jack, which, which is really nice. So I'm not going to bother everybody on BART with Angry Birds or what have you. I also have a little micro SD card slot, which is excellent because uh, you can also add in, you know, data. You can put your photos in here and view those and your music and whatnot. Although games do require you to actually have them on the inside of this. The inside of this can ha hold 16 gigs of internal storage, so... Not too bad. It's quite a lot of gigs of internal storage. And then, of course, I also have the uh, mini HDMI port right here for any kind of, you know, external. Full screen gaming. Full screen yeah. gaming. Exactly. 
So this is kind of weird. This thing is called the lid. What? <laughs> so you'd think like... You broke it. You'd think there was a reason for this. <laughs> it's this little plastic lid that can... magnetically hops back on there. And it is just for customizing. So you can put a change different color colors. on there. Oh. Yeah, you can change colors. It's just an accessory. Mm. That's it. Okay. I was kind of hoping that it would have like... NFC capabilities or some really cool thing that it could do, but it and doesn't. And just, just be the best or like the quickest thing to get lost. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. The magnet, the magnetic strip on the back of it is pretty strong, but it's just there to be there. And it costs twenty dollars per lid if you want to buy extras. Yeah, so it comes with the silver one, but there's a black one, a carbon fiber one. Woo! If you want those. I, I think it's kind one. of ridiculous, but that's that's I just me. <laughs> I love gold. I love gold. All right. Like, but when it comes to the, the gaming... Okay. I'm going to save that for last. Oh, okay. Because I'll, I'll definitely get into the gaming. So the software on this is Android. It's Android Jelly Bean. It's 4.2.1. So it's very nice. It's, um, you know, you can download Buttery. all your regular Google Play games on here that you want to play. You can also check Twitter on here. You can do things like that. It doesn't have a camera on the front or the back, so you can't do Skype calls you can't take pictures, nothing like that. It also can't do any phone calls. It's just Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi only, unfortunately. And it's not like a like a LTE or no, it's like not. Yeah, they don't have any ties into any kind of carrier gotcha. at all. It's just Wi-Fi. So there is this neat little standpoint that it has with um, PC streaming for gaming. I'll get into in just a moment. But basically, once you leave your house, it just turns into a um, glorified gaming mobile Android device, basically. So it does have really, really long battery life, which I like. Um, 10 hours of Whoa. complete non, non-stop gaming portable, you know, fun Goodness. times yeah. on here. And it does take four hours to charge. I did test it. It can actually hit 10 hours, like, if you're non-stop playing on it. So that's that's nice. not not bad at all. I can't hit that on my iPhone. So, so that's kind of a comparison. So this thing called PC streaming, this is when you take this and you can connect it to your PC and you can play games off your PC onto this five inch portable gaming device. So basically what you do is you go on there and you find games in your Steam, uh, your Steam community or your Steam library that you've already downloaded on your computer. And you can have those stream over to the NVIDIA Shield, and you can play them while you're walking around your house if you're, like, on the toilet or something and you want to play games. Sure. Because I guess, you know, some people do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's a it's a ball. Yeah, so this is still in beta. <laughs> this is still in beta. It's, it's a little bit laggy. I, unfortunately, don't have the correct capability to be able to do it in my household. You have to have a GeForce, I believe it's the GTX 650 or gotcha. higher. Uh, a video graphics card. So unfortunately, mine, I, I built my computer like two or three years ago. I don't have that one. So I wasn't able to try this out. But from what I've read with everyone is basically you can do it. It's pretty cool. It's a nice little perk, but it still has a long way to go because it is a little bit laggy. It does get disconnected from your computer. So there are going to be quite a few problems with it as far as that And anything goes. that you love so much that you are playing it on the toilet means that you care a lot about that game, <laughs> exactly. which means that you are going to be upset all the more if it drops out in the middle of it or yep. in some way screws up what you're trying to do. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that would really tick me off if in the middle of my, like, Team Fortress 2 game, yeah. it dropped out and, like, I just had a headshot. I just and just like, a no! howl from the Morse toilet. <laughs> no! Echoing through the entire household. No! <laughs> And it does have the 16 gigs internal memory of, or storage, of course. It also has a Tegra 4 chip, so super fast processing speed, which is a total plus when it comes to gaming on this device. It is really, really fun. Now, this gamepad, kind of interesting. So the way it's set up, it's very, very comfortable to hold. Yeah. Really comfy. It looks, it looks balanced. The place where the two pads are is perfectly placed. I mean, that's automatically where my thumbs go. It feels now, like, 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 where would you rank it compared to, like, an Xbox controller? Because it seems like it has the same ergonomic... I would say this is, like, 70% there. Okay. So slightly inferior yeah, slightly than you were trading inferior. for so this mobile experience. Is because if you look at this from the bottom, when you shut it, 
it's got to shut all the way. So they actually took these two analog sticks and they stuck them in a little bit. Uh, so when you move your hands so over, you're reaching in. you got to reach in a little bit to actually hit the analog stick. So I found myself not using these as much as I probably should in certain games. Uh, I ended up using a lot more of this directional pad instead of the analog stick. Because that is raised up exactly. farther. Now, the analog sticks are great when you're just on the menu and you want to move this little mouse around and click on something. That's totally fine. But, but if you're like I'm an gaming, NBA player, then like that's yeah. great. You know, <laughs> you have huge hands. Exactly. <laughs> so it gets to be kind of a pain in the butt to actually use those. Now, on the back, they do have the triggers. They have the right and left click pads. And these are super clicky, too. I really like how clicky these are. And then the triggers are really, really resistant. So when you press them down, you have to press them down really hard to actually get them to do anything, um, which is kind of nice. I like that. So I'm not accidentally hitting the trigger when I'm playing, you know, whatever shooter game or what have you. Mm -hmm. So it's actually kind of nice. Um, the mouse navigation, again, is very cool. Um, I love that they included that because, honestly, you need that sometimes. Now, gaming in all, I, I would say I would probably use this more as a tablet and less for the game, the hardcore gaming. Okay. So, so it's excellent for viewing like videos on it. The videos look great. I really, really like the screen resolution. The music is awesome. Typing, of course, is a pain and there's no camera on it. The gaming is really fun. It's very easy. Although the Android games, they may or may not work with the controller because you know a lot of Android games are made for a touchscreen. They're not yeah. made for a controller. So they, the devices, it might not be compatible with the game ex itself. Also... Did you run into that specifically? Not on the games that I tried, but I've read a lot about it and a lot of people did. So there and that's, are... That's hard. when you, If you buy yeah. a dedicated Android gaming peripheral exactly. and like you don't have any guarantees that it will be able to be used by the hottest, awesomest thing that everybody else is playing. Now, in here, so to get to this, you hit this middle Tegra button right here. Click on that, and you get to this thing called the Shield Store. So this is where you can purchase or find free games that are actually compatible specifically with the NVIDIA Shield. So all of these are different games that they've already tested, and they've actually made compatible for the uh, gaming console on here, the actual controller. So all of these are toyed to be, you know, very, very good with this. Um, we do have two games downloaded. We got, of course, Sonic the Hedgehog and Expendable. So if I go into one of these, I'll choose Expendable. I'm really bad at this game, by the way. Just letting you know now. This is preloaded or you're playing over the stream right yes, now? Yes, this is preloaded. So this was already downloaded onto the device. What was the to... What was the storage space on it? 16 gigs. Gotcha. Yeah, and you, you can always add on more gigs in the background. And I'll lower the volume so we don't have to listen to that too much. Play. Okay, I'll should do it be in more things game. exploding by now. Nah, I'll do normal. Why not? I can actually just, you know, I can run around. It's very fluid. It's pretty simple. It's very fun. But... I've found myself using this more as a tablet than a gaming product which is kind of not what they were going for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would, it would seem like it's a tablet with qualifiers yeah. and a gaming device with qualifiers. It's, it's made for a very niche audience of, you know, those hardcore mobile gamers, those people that really, really want the new thing. And it's very, very cool. It's a really neat device. And it's so different from anything else on the market right now that I was just like, why don't you want it? <laughs> sure. But it's also for people that really are into audio and those video obsessions, you know, those video obsessors that really want to have a nice screen. That's easily docked. I really like that. You can basically turn this into a dock for your, your movies and not have to have something sitting up behind it to, you know, prep it up. Yeah. Prep it up. But you have so, the limitations of that screen. Yes, it does have limitations. You know, it's, it is a little bit smaller yeah. of a screen. It's not as big as most of your tablets on the market, well, any of the tablets on the market. So my pros and cons with this, my pros, very, very loud audio, really nice, excellent screen. The controller build is super fun. It's a very, very comfortable uh, machine to play with. And the processing power on this is great. I wish Tegra 4 was in all of my products. And the cons, of course, it is a little bulky. 
So when you sit this, you know, in your purse or in your backpack or whatnot, it is rather heavy and it's, a, you know, quite bulky. And the PC streaming compatibility is only available for those GeForce uh, video cards. And that's a really big downfall for a lot of people is because, you know, they want to be able to stream those games to a mobile device, but you have to have that $150 card to be able to do it. So since this is for a niche audience, I had to give it out of a buy, try, or a don't buy, I had to give it a try. It's a really fun product. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit, but I, I definitely felt like I wasn't the, the audience that it is toyed for. Yeah. So it's, it's a very, very niche audience. But I don't know. Maybe you could give it a try. Um, I could. I feel <laughs> like, uh, you know, I, I could use it to do my makeup. <laughs> do your makeup, yes. Yeah, well, you could use the good. silver... It is, it's got it's got a heft to it. Yeah, you know it is. It feels it feels very solid. Well made. Yeah, and that's a big thing for me. Is Anything with, with a flip, cheap, I'm not gonna. You know buy it. because that's where you're gonna get a lot of like yeah. But right. that, that, that's where it might feel cheap. Right. Is is in is in the top, but that feels it feels solid. I guess that's the thing. Is it's like, I mean, I don't know, Padre. You're you're, 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 you're you're way more, more of an Android guy, but like, you know, it just seems like it's it's uh it's seven out of ten yeah. in all these different. <laughs> Uh, it's areas. like, oh, so close. Oh, I got to have that video card? Dang it. Yeah, well, yeah, so close. <laughs> and also, like, in things that aren't necessarily... The person who wants a tablet and wants to watch movies and wants yeah. to surf the web isn't necessarily the hardcore gamer that wants to carry around an Xbox controller. But if controller. you're both, then this is something that yeah. they'll probably I, I, buy. I think, yes. It has a space. I mean, this, is, this seems to be... This is not going to be someone's primary device. It's, yeah. It's not their primary tablet. But if they already have... If they've already bought into the Android ecosystem... Yeah. This would be a nice device to have that also lets them play games much more comfortably yes. than this. Because, yeah, we could all buy a tablet like this sure. and play almost all the games that can be played on this. But there's something that's nice about having a controller. There's something that's nice about no, having a No, there certainly nice is. I mean, I know, like, when, when they released, uh, I think it was GTA 3 on, uh, on iOS. Like, yeah. it was something that I like to play around with, but it's very frustrating on a tablet's controllers. I mean, to have, a, to, to have a peripheral was, was, uh, would have been a huge advantage. Justin, I forgot to ask you earlier, where can people find your stuff? Oh, yeah. Uh, you can uh, watch me Tuesdays at uh, 7 p.m. Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Time on the NSFW show with Brian Brushwood. Which is uh, a great show. Everyone should watch it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> tonight, uh, uh, Tay Allen of uh, the uh, hit internet single Mass Text is going to be live with us. Cool. Uh, so you guys can go ahead and check that out. And other than that, it is Justin R. Young on Twitter for everything that you might want. Thank you. Thank you so much, Justin, for your Thank review. You. Thank you, Padre. Oh, I'm Father sorry. Robert I'm, I'm blowing stuff up. Oh, I'm so sorry <laughs> I interrupted you. My bad. So we have one last review today. We saved the best for last. We did. <laughs> now, this is kind of a ridiculous device. It's basically an accessory for your iPhone for uh, easy alarm clock use. Oh. <laughs> Liz reviewed it for us, and she's going to take it away. Hi, I'm Liz from Twit, and I'm reviewing the Steel Union Snooze. So the design of this is you actually get this piece of wood with this piece of rubber for 35 bucks. This is the free app that comes with it, which is like Candy Crush. It only comes with three things, and you have to buy more packages for more money to get anything. You get this. You get three ringtones and nothing else. I didn't know there was a simple thing where you actually just glide your finger to make this dim. Nope, I found that out by accident. No instructions. Oh, there's my alarm. Wait, let's see if I can do it, guys. Oh, success! That normally doesn't happen. Oh, since iOS 7 came out, this is really redundant. Now when the alarm goes on, you can actually just tap your phone and it will snooze. You don't need to buy this for $35 and have it so that you feel like a blind person doing, trying to figure out where, what you're reading. This isn't necessary. And this is only for the iPhone 4 and 5. So, for my pros and cons. Pro, I really like the design and the effort that was behind this. This seems like something great. If you're actually going to be hitting snooze and need to have easily accessibility of your phone, unplug, this won't actually go anywhere like it claims. Yay, good idea. But 35 bucks in the app, which you have to keep paying more and more money for, didn't make this worthwhile. So for my cons, my con is it's 35 bucks. I could have someone make this at Woodshop and it wouldn't cost this much. No, 
something more prettier, something that actually was more functional. Also, the app, it comes with slim to nothing. It's like Candy Crush. If you want to actually use it for all its prettiness and what it's designed for, you have to pay more money. So, as you might have guessed, I'm going to give this a don't buy. Love the idea. Hope the second generation will be greater with iOS 7 since it's iOS only. So that was my review of the Distill Union Snooze. Oh, it's so cute, but the button, it only works half the time and it has to... I'll tell you, you know. it's also, I mean, I'm on the road a lot and I need, uh, I really, really rely on alarms. If yes. that folded down and was a little bit more portable... I yes. feel like it would be a lot more functional because just even having something that would cup sound that would like fill the room That's uh, true. could be useful. But if it's like that, it, it almost like it, it wants to be a permanent part of your dresser. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know if that looks great enough to be a permanent part of my dresser. Yeah, you know? that's very true. So that was Liz's review of the Distill Union Snooze. And she gave it a don't buy. And womp, womp. Womp, womp. <laughs> So that about wraps up this episode of Before You Buy. If you want to find other reviews online, you can go to youtube.com slash before you buy. We try to split them all up into different reviews so that they're very easy to search and easy to find and share with your friends. And you can let us know what you think and what you want us to cover by emailing us over at byb at twit.tv. And I'll personally get those emails and check out what you guys want to see us do. And I also want to thank both of our reviewers hey, here. Hey, now. Justin and Mr. Father Robert Balassar. And I would also like to thank Liz and Tom as well for their reviews. And folks, if you guys have any questions, of course, email me again, byb at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week again hosting for Mr. Leo Laporte. I know he'll be back soon, guys. As he continues Just one more to traverse the Italian again. countryside. I'm so jealous. Oh. <laughs> they take so many pictures, my God. They do. I know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll see you next week on Before You Buy. And remember, you gotta watch Before You Buy. Bye.